what we're going to do today is we're going to show off both uh, the student resources and once we've uh, gone through all of them we're going to cross over to the teacher side of things and show you how uh, all those features work. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to log in as a teacher Now you should notice this is the dashboard screen or the home screen if you want to think of it that way. This is basically what both students and teachers are going to see. Obviously the teacher accounts are going to have different functionality to their students. Um, this dashboard, as I mentioned, is the home screen. You can access this at any point during Hotmaps with the shortcut at the very top over here. So if you're in a lesson or you're in whatever it is, feel free to jump to the top, click on the shortcut and you can uh, access all the features through here. The next button we have is the course selection. So you should know that all teacher accounts and student accounts have access to everything that we offer currently on Hotmaps, including all year levels. So today we're going to look at essential mathematics for the Australian curriculum. I'm going to jump into year eight. So as soon as I click update, it'll actually open up the course and it'll lay it out chapter to chapter on the left hand side over here and lesson to lesson on the right hand side over here. So if you need information on your particular course, what you can actually do is click on this course, course information button. It'll pull up a PDF and it'll show you how uh, the course that you're in relates to either the Australian curriculum or one of the books that you might be using. So these are PDFs which you're free to download and store. So I'm going to jump into Chapter 5 Algebra. Each time you open up one of these chapters on the left hand side over here, uh, it'll actually open up all the lessons for that chapter on the right hand side over here. So one of the useful tools that comes with each chapter is the topic quizzes. Now these can be used for pre and post chapter testing. You should notice that there are three levels and it starts at level two, level three and then the challenge. So there used to be a level one but we found it wasn't really necessary so uh, yeah it starts at level two. So the best thing about uh, the topic quizzes is as soon as you click into one, your students can put in all their answers. So let's just imagine uh, I've put in some answers. I'm going to click check answers, which is essentially submitting your topic quiz. Um, obviously, I've got zero out of 13, but the best thing is they'll show me feedback on what I got correct, incorrect, and what I need to revise on. So if I scroll over all of these uh, links here, this is exactly what I need to revise on. So students have unlimited attempts at these topic quizzes and each submission is recorded. So I'll show you how you can view the results uh, for these topic quizzes when we cross over to the teacher side of things. Uh, but for now we're going to jump into a lesson. So I'm going to jump into 5.2 substitution. So each time you open up a lesson, all the lesson notes will appear on the left hand side. So at this point you can either print them out using this uh, button just over here, or if you'd like to project them up onto your whiteboard or projector, whatever you have, feel free to click on the full screen mode just over here. So you'll notice that throughout the lesson, there's going to be uh, a bunch of resources uh, just scattered throughout the notes. So the first one I'm going to run through is the dictionary definitions. So if you see a hyperlinked word within lesson notes, it actually means that there's a definition in our dictionary, and as soon as you click on it, so in this case, we'll look at pronumerals. It'll open up the dictionary in another window. It'll give you a definition, an example, and everywhere where it's referenced in Hotmaps. So this is quite a useful tool for seeing if you need more information on a particular concept or topic. Say, for example, we want to jump to the word triangle. We click on P, go to triangle. We've got our definition at the top over here. We've got an example, and everywhere where it's referenced. So if I want to cross over to another year level, so year 7, year 9, year 8, this is one of the quick ways that you can do it. So the other way to access the dictionary, uh, apart from clicking on the hyperlink words, is to go to our dashboard the shortcut, click on dictionary, and again it will open up in a new window and you can access it from there. So the next resource that we'll go through are the widgets. So for those of you who don't know, in the Hotmaps context, a widget is basically uh, an illustration of a, a mathematical concept. 
And now we've got a few here, but I'd like to show two particular ones that I like to show off. So I'm going to use the search feature at the top. Again, another useful tool. This one looks at line of best fit. So this one lies within your stats and prob um, chapters for year nine, I'm pretty sure. So this is one type of widget where basically we uh, engage the student and try and develop some fluency in the concept. So basically the students ask to predict the linear regression based on the data points on the axes over here. They can drag the purple line wherever they'd like. They can then check the answer using the regression line button. And when they feel they're comfortable with the concept, then they can move on to the next part of this particular widget. So if we clear this, we can click random and it'll generate another set of points which we can then make another prediction. That's pretty spot on. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the grid and I'm going to plot my own points. So a widget like this would be very useful if you've got an uh, interactive whiteboard. You can do it as a class. You can get one student to plot the points and another student to make the prediction. Lastly, we can push the boundaries of this particular concept. If we put something that resembles a parabola, we can see that linear regression is not going to be appropriate. So with widgets like these, the best thing to do is explore and see what um, suits you and your students. I'm going to cross over to another type of widget that we have, which is basically an animation. In this case, we're going to look at deriving x solutions using completing the square. I think that might be in year 10 or something leading into your year 11 or senior maths. So in this case, an example is projected up onto the screen. We can press play and hot maths will basically run through step by step on how to derive the solutions using completing the square. So at any point, you can press pause. You can maybe ask the students to make a prediction on what they think the next step of calculation is, and then they can move on. At any point, they can uh, review the annotated notes on the right-hand side over here. They can press pause, they can rewind, they can fast forward. So this obviously goes on until the solutions are derived. Again, another really useful tool for um, doing a project that up onto your whiteboard. So those are basically the two main types of widgets that we have. Now there's hundreds and hundreds of widgets, so the best thing to do, as I mentioned, is uh, explore and see what suits you guys. Use the search function as much as you can. If you're not happy with the widgets that are already in the particular lesson that you're in, maybe just uh, search something relating to substitution to algebra just in the top over here. So the next resource that we'll go through uh, the hot sheet. So anytime you see this red paper symbol, that means that is a hot sheet. So you might ask what a hot sheet is. It's basically a worksheet that can be anything from an investigative activity, a research activity, uh, it could be straight question and answer, it could be a cutout, it could be games. Um, it really varies from topic to topic. So now as soon as I click on one of these, it will actually open up in another window as a PDF. So if you wish to download these onto your computer, feel free to do so. You should know that they all come with the corresponding solutions. So now depending on um, what topic you're in, the amount of hot sheets per lesson varies from chapter to chapter. So in this case, we've got uh, three, but you might see in the next lesson there might be six or there might be one. So the last resource uh, in this page that we'll go through is the relevant textbook notes if you're using one of our textbooks. So because I'm using Essential uh, Mathematics, the Australian curriculum, that's actually based on one of our books. If you're using one of our books, the student just needs to click on this icon. They'll need to input a validation code, which is found on the inside cover of their textbook, or it can be found on the cardboard uh, cutout that uh, they would have purchased at the start of the year. So they just need to punch in that code once. As soon as I do that, they can view the relevant notes for the whole year. So it saves them having to go from Cambridge Go or even having their actual physical um, textbook out. The 
basically that is the resources tab. We're going to jump over to the walkthroughs tab. Now, a walkthrough is basically, uh, it'll prompt the student with a question and it'll walk them step by step on how to complete it. So think of these as your work examples found uh, in the introduction of your lessons in, in a textbook. As soon as we click start, we'll notice that there are four steps to this particular uh, problem. If we put in the incorrect answer first, we click on answer, it'll actually give you a hint as to what is the correct answer before you can actually move on. So students will get two attempts before they're given the answer. And now we can move on. Now, similar to the hot sheets, depending on what topic you're in, the amount of walkthroughs is going to vary. So in this particular case, we've got two walkthroughs, but you might find um, some topics have five or six. Uh, so again, the best thing to do is have a play around and see what suits you guys. Now, we're going to skip the Scorcher tab. We'll come back to that. We're going to go straight to the questions. So you'll notice that the questions start at level one, whereas the topic quizzes, they start at level two. So now, in terms of the Australian curriculum, these are closely aligned to the proficiency strand. So this would be understanding, fluency, problem solving, and reasoning. So if we go into one of these levels, there is a minimum of eight questions per level per lesson. So there's going to be a minimum of 32 questions per lesson. The student has unlimited attempts at each question, but all the results are recorded. So a useful tool as a teacher is uh, viewing results for. If you'd like to see how a particular problem set went on your class, we can click on view results for class, partially type in the name of the class. And if I had real students in here, it'll show me a percentage of how many students got each question correct. So it's quite useful for seeing uh, which questions are too difficult and which are too easy. You can also see how it went for an individual or the whole year level. Uh, generally what a lot of teachers do is they'll assign their students questions level 1, level 2, and then they'll get them to shift over to the Scorcher feature. Now this is basically a skill and drill function. Um, the student will be thrown 10 questions at a time, they will be timed, and the aim is to get as many correct as possible in the shortest amount of time. So just for today I'm going to put in any random answer, I've obviously got 0 out of 10, but that's not to worry. I can actually go back and revise each of the questions that I've just done. If I click on any one of these cards, it'll pull up the question, the answer that I've put in, and a solution at the bottom. So it's a great revision tool as well. So the aim of uh, the Scorcher feature is basically to develop the, the fluency strand of things, because these questions are set at uh, level 2. So once uh, your students are starting to get the hang of a particular concept, They've done the score chart, they're doing pretty well. That's when you can cross them over to questions level three and the challenge. So now we've basically covered um, all the student resources. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the teacher side of things. I'm going to click on my shortcut, click on the dashboard. So I've gone back to my home screen. So one thing you should know about Hot Maths is it basically runs like an online school. So in your school, you'll have your classrooms, your, te your teachers and your students in those classes. So how are those classes structured? Well, if you're an administrator, you can click on the admin button, click on manage classes. What happens here is it'll populate all your teacher accounts under one um, tab over here and all your student accounts under another tab. So if you need information on a particular topic, sorry, on a particular account, you can click on the information button next to one of the accounts. This will give you the details of the student's username and password if they've forgotten them, and all the classes that they're in, how long they've been logged in for, and the last time they logged in. So 
So it really gives you a gauge of how many, uh, of how much your students are using Hotmail. At any point, if you need to print out class lists, if you want a hard copy of the usernames and passwords, we can click on the page button at the top over here. It will offer you in a PDF or Excel format. If I just click on PDF, this is an example of a class list with all the usernames and passwords. So these are all the accounts on the left hand side over here. On the right hand side are all our classes. Obviously you don't want to set um, all your students in the school the same way. So if you'd like to differentiate your students, this is where you can do it. So just as an example, I'm going to create a new class. Now that I've created my class, I just need to add my students into it. So I can do that by clicking on the Students tab. If I need to multi-select, I'll hold down Control. And just click on the plus sign over here. Now I've got my students in that particular class. So now that all my classes are set up, I can go into my account settings at the top right over here, and I need to actually select that class to teach. Submit class settings, and now we're good to go. We're going to go back to our dashboard. The first thing that we're going to run through is the task manager. So this is basically where you can create, access, store, and see the progress of the task that you set for your students. So you should know that um, tasks only direct your students on where to go and what to do. It doesn't actually lock them out from anything. So if I'd like to set my class some homework or some in-class activity, I can click on new task, select where I'd like my work from. So I'm going to stick with year 8, chapter 5, and 5.2, substitution. I can click on the lesson notes, questions level 1 and 2 going to be a real introduction sort of lesson, the walkthroughs, the scorcher. You can add a little note. And then I need to assign it to my class. If you don't want all your students to do it, you can deselect all students, hold down control to multi-select, click OK. Now that task has been sent off to those students. So when they log in, they'll get a notification saying uh, you've got a task waiting. So I'll just give you a quick preview of what that should look like. Logging in as a student. And at the top over here is our notification center. So I've got obviously a fair few tasks waiting. If I click on that, the very first task I've got is what I need to complete. So these are links that will take me directly to the lesson. If I say click on questions level one, uh, this is where your work is from. The note that I've added and which teacher has assigned it. Um, you should know that the students won't see the name of the class. I can click on that link and it'll take me directly there. I'm going to log back in as a teacher. I'm going to go back to my task manager, and here's the task that I've just created. If I'd like to get a quick snapshot of how the task is actually going for my students, I can click on the progress link for that task, and it will show me which students have completed which components. Now, at this point, should you feel your students uh, have done enough of the task, you can close it. Now that task will appear at the very bottom under closed task. So at this point, I can actually click on it and generate a report from here. So we can either click here for details or click on view class lesson report. Or if you'd like to make a general report, so you know what, you're, what you need in your report, we can click on the report feature. Now there's two ways we can look at a report. There is by the class and by the individual. So if we want to look at it by the class, we'll need to actually click on the class name. 
So click on the class name, so Year 9 Foundation, select the report type. So I'm looking at a lesson report of substitution. Again, there's no real data in my account, but just for an example, I'm going to click on the PDF. This is just one example of what a report would look like. Now, the best thing to do is to have a play around and see what reports suit you guys. So there's four different types for uh, your class reports. And if you want to look at an individual report, what we'll do is we'll open up our class using the plus sign, click on the individual's name, select the report type. So I'm going to look at one particular topic. And just because I know there's some data in here, I'm going to click on this particular topic from upper primary. Click on PDF. Now here's an example of what a uh, topic report would look like. So what this actually means is uh, George Bubble has completed these three lessons. They've done X amount of walkthroughs. They've completed uh, X amount of questions. They've scored your results. And as I mentioned, all the topic quiz results are recorded under the one table. So we can see this student has completed it seven times. And we can see that she's struggling with introducing Roman numerals as indicated by the line of red dots down here. We're going to go back to our home screen. Um, the messaging system. This is basically used as a reminder sort of service. So if you know your students have got outstanding work, this is where you could use to, uh, what you could use to inform them. We can click on Compose. At this point, you can type your message, the subject, um, if you'd like to send it to an individual student or a whole class. So now students can only receive messages, and teachers can only message students. Now the next thing that we're going to go through is definitely the biggest feature in HotMaps. It is the test generator. So basically, this is where you can create, access, store, and assign your tests. Now you should know that there are thousands and thousands of questions in HotMaps. So if you're handpicking questions for a test, it can be quite time consuming. I'm going to create one. So if you're handpicking it, and if you're quite particular on what you want in your test, use the manual selection method. But if you press the time, you can use the wizard. So I'm going to click on the wizard. one revision. Now I'm going to make this a very uh, introductory sort of test. So I'm going to focus on levels one and two and maybe throw in one question from level three. So that means for each unit selection I make on the right hand side over here, it's going to randomly generate three questions for level one, two questions for level two, and one question for level three. So a total of six questions per lesson. So I'm going to open up my Australian curriculum book and stick with year 8, open up Algebra. Now I can select the lessons that I'm after. Okay, so now I've selected 5 lessons. So 5 times 6, that means I'm going to have 30 questions in my test. Just make sure you don't go over 50 questions, because obviously that's not going to work. I can click on Generate. And now I've got my draft test on the right-hand side over here. So at this point, Feel free to review your test before you save it. You can pull up a question by clicking on the magnifying glass. If you're happy with it, obviously you can leave it in. If you're not happy with it, feel free to delete it using the red delete button next to each question. You'll also notice that there's a, a star next to each question. This indicates uh, the level of difficulty. The so green is level one, orange is level two, red's level three, and a little flame will be the challenge level. If you need to swap the orders of the questions, feel free to drag and drop. Or if you'd like to search for a question, that is, use the manual selection method, you can search using these parameters, select the difficulty level. Now this will pull up a bunch of questions that fit this criteria. If I want to add in this question, I'm happy with that one. I can use the orange arrow to add it in at the very bottom. If I'd like to shuffle the question around, again, just drag and drop. 
click on save, I'm happy with my test, that will save to my test bank. So if I click on back, it will be the test at the very top. So now your options with that test, you can either sign it online, basically set a time limit for format that you'd like to test in. So it can either be assessment or revision. So assessment is quite formal. The students will only get one attempt and they'll only get the answers as soon as the time limit runs out. Or if they put it in revision mode, um, they can go in and out of the test provided it's within the time limit, but they'll get the answers as soon as they click submit. Again, you can assign it to whatever class that you'd like or just a select few students. And click submit. Now that you complete that test online. If you'd like to make a copy of the test, but change the order around, click on copy, different random order. So now we've got two versions of the same test. So at this point, you can assign half a class version A and the other half version B. If you'd like to edit any test at any point, feel free to do so. Usually you can obviously chop and change the questions, uh, delete them, make them shorter, do whatever you'd like to them. If you're happy with uh, one of the tests that you've made and you'd like to share it with another teacher, we can click on share. Again, hold down control for multi-select. Click share test. And now those teachers will get a copy of those tests sitting in their test bank. If you'd like to have a hard copy of the test or a soft copy, you can just click on view print. We'll pull up a PDF version of the test that you've just created. At which point you can save to your computer. And with those tests are the corresponding solutions. So we just need to click on the marking key. Again, you can save those as well. So now that you've assigned your test, um, you can actually check out the results for them. So to do that, we'll click on the Assigned Test Reports tab. Now these are all the tests that I've assigned to my uh, classes. So if we click on Next, I'm going to find the test for these results. Okay, so for this particular test, you can view the results by either the student or by the question. So we click on View Student Results. It'll actually compile all the student results in the one table and it'll break the test down and show you which students got each question correct and incorrect. So these green bars indicate a correct answer while the red bars obviously indicate an incorrect answer. If you'd like to pull up a particular question, click on it, it'll pull up the question, it'll show you what the students inputted and what the correct answers are. Or if you'd like to view the test as a whole, just click on the student's name and we can see all the results from their test, broken down by page. Okay, so now the next way we can look at results is by the question. So very similar to the tool that we have in uh, questions in a lesson. This will break down the test and it will show you the percentage of how many students got each, uh, each question correct, incorrect, didn't attempt it, and I think most importantly where the actual question was from. So we can see question one, everyone got it right. Question two, everyone got it right. Keep going. So question five, everyone got this incorrect. So we may need to revise adding and subtracting terms. So it's uh, yeah, a really useful tool for identifying gaps in student knowledge as a, as a whole class and addressing basically the weak points. So that's basically the test generator. Again, I'm going to go back to our dashboard. There's only a few more things that we need to go through. Uh, games obviously speak for themselves. It's up to the teacher and the student if they think they're relevant to the particular topic that you're in. So as soon as I click on games, it'll list all the games on the left-hand side and the students can access them from here. This is an example. This one's called Shape Sketch, a very good one for projecting onto your whiteboard or if you've got an interactive whiteboard. Basically, you're just asked to draw the shape that's projected onto the hotmap screen and you're rated in terms of angles, length, and timer at the bottom. 
stops up very easy and it gets progressively hot. So the next thing we'll go through is the help site. Basically, if you're struggling with anything, feel free to jump on the help site, jump to the teacher guide. Basically, this will walk you step by step on how to do anything, really. So, creating tests, they're all accompanied by steps as well as screenshots. Again, um, if you prefer help directly from us, feel free to either give us a call or an email and we can sort you out. And our fundamentals is for the primary years, F for two. And Block Buddies is basically a mental arithmetic version of uh, the Scorcher. So this is definitely targeted at your upper primary to uh, at most year seven, year eight. But obviously anyone can play it. You should know that, the, that this is also an app. So you can download it through the iTunes store. Uh, it is free. You just need to log in using your Hotmax account. So I'm just going to run through one, just as an example. The aim, obviously, is to get as many correct as possible in the shortest amount of time, earn some coins, and decorate your avatar. Now that about wraps it up for the webinar. Um, thank you all for attending. If you could please um, fill out the survey once this webinar has finished, that would be great. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us at any time and we'll definitely get back to you. Thank you very much, guys.